Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And now here's a job that you might not want to do. Now let me explain. It's all to do with the air conditioning in the old cars like the E31 and the E64, my wife's Mini and so on. Now years and years ago when you used to be able to get 134A um, anywhere, you get it from eBay or from Amazon and all the rest of it, you'd get a little kit and here's a bit of a kit. So you've got a kit like that, a gauge, and a bottle of stuff. And the plan was you just sort of screw that in there, stick that on the low pressure side, and uh, turn the tap until the, the meter read it was sort of 35 PSI and so on. And then your air conditioning would start working again. And that sort of worked fine, uh, no problem at all. And I had lots of old cars like the E32 and E38 that I used to use this method on. Now with the E31, uh, it got to a point where I had too many leaks in it. And so it made much more sense to sort of repair the leaks and then get it professionally regassed. And when they regas it, they just plug it into an automatic machine and it does all the work for them. What it'll do is it slurps out all the old oil, all the old peg oil and all the old refrigerant. And then it puts a deep vacuum on the system. And what it would expect to see is no loss of vacuum. So it's vacuum, lock the system and then measure the depression in the air conditioning system. Now if it held a vacuum that's fine, you can get on and do other stuff and if it didn't hold a vacuum then that's it, you've given up, you've got a leak somewhere, you have to sort it. So I, I sorted it on my E31, a condenser was the problem with that. <coughs> so I replaced the condenser and everything was okay. Anyway I'm getting off the subject a bit. Anyway in those sort of situations use this automatic machine, it costs you 40, 50 quid. I mean, there used to be loads of garages with signs out say, air conditioning servicing, 40 quid. And so I used to take the E31 up uh, and get that done at one of the garages. And uh, well, until they realized that it took 1.6 kilograms of 134A actually to, to fill it up. And then they went off the plan a bit. Uh, but anyway, that's the case these days. I'll take the car to a garage and get it re if it started getting pretty weak. But what would happen, for instance, if there was a virus and you couldn't go out and have your car air conditioning serviced and the garages <laughs> won't be offering that sort of thing anyway. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd go back to try and uh, one of the cheap kits you can get from Amazon and eBay and all sorts of other places. They can't get 134A anymore and they have what they call a drop in replacement, which is this stuff. <clears throat> and OK, so. Can't go to the garage or not anymore, so I'll try that stuff. Now, I've just done it to my wife's car, and that worked really well. Uh, the air conditioning just got slowly weaker and weaker. It wasn't as though I had a sudden failure, in which case it'd have a big hole somewhere, and sort of puffing this stuff into it is going to make no difference at all. Uh, no, it was fine. So I puffed it up with this stuff, got it up to 35 psi, and the air conditioning's fine again. So I'm going to have a go on the E31 and I'll show you exactly the process. Now I'll tell you, this is highly contentious uh, with the air conditioning specialists. They always say, don't do it. You can't do it. It's such a stupid way to try and fill it up. And the reason why is because you can't tell what any, any part of the system's doing. You can measure the low pressure, which is fine. You've got a gauge to measure the low pressure. But just measuring the low pressure on your own isn't enough. You need to measure the high pressure side as well. And when you measure that, you can then check how the system's actually working. It might be that the high pressure side is really high. Um, but on a system that's just slowly gone wrong and slowly got weaker and weaker, like the E31 has, and it sort of does this over three or four years, it, all, it starts off fine. But the third year, it starts getting a bit weak and weedy. So I'm going to give it a go with uh, the stuff, with the gauge, and see how we get on. Right, let's get on with it. And I'll go through the whole procedure. Right, as we're talking about pressures around the system, I thought I'd best give, just before we get on to it, give a quick explanation of why we see pressures within, within the air conditioning system. Right, I've just drawn a loop of pipe with a compressor on it. And what we do is we puff it up with 50 psi of a gas. So if we then measured the low pressure side or the high pressure side, they're both safe for 50 psi, and that's before the compressor starts running. Now when we start running the compressor, all that happens is that the gas goes round and round in circles. 
and there's no change in pressure at all. It's just like um, like the uh, cooling system in the car. Water just circulates all the time. So what happens then if we put a restrictor in the pipe, like we got here, have a close look at that, and there's the pipe, here's the constrictor, and it's actually called the expansion valve. So I put EV here, that's the expansion valve. Well, obviously the gas has problem getting through this aperture, and so this part of the system here is now at a much higher pressure than this one here. So that's why we see differences in pressure. And ignoring everything else, um, we expect to see a higher pressure this side because it has to go through a little uh, aperture to get round to the next side than this side. Um, so that's why you see different pressures throughout the system. So it's as simple as that. You have a compressor whizzing along trying to move gas round in a circuit. And because there's a constricted part, then one side is higher in pressure than the other. Now, I've heard explanations from, even from air conditioning engineers, on how air conditioning works. And they say, well, it's simple. You compress the gas, uh, it gets hotter. It's like pushing a bicycle pump, it heats up the bicycle pump. And then when you let go of the pressure, it gets colder. Well, that's true to a certain extent, but if that really was the case, then you could just fill up an air conditioning system with air and it would work just as well. No, we use a special gas which has properties, which means it can change between a liquid and a gas, and from a gas to a liquid at the temperatures we're interested in and at the pressures we're interested in. And you would have been taught this at school uh, in physics about phase changes, and a phase change is a change from a gas to a liquid and a liquid to a solid, and it takes huge amounts of energy to move them between these two these states. They're called phase changes. And so, not only will it take a lot of energy to turn a gas into a liquid, also takes a lot of energy to turn that liquid back to a gas again. And I'll show you why that's important. So we've got a compressor and we've got some ambient pressure in the system. And as soon as the compressor starts running, this turns to a high pressure here. And as we squeeze the gas, we turn it into a liquid in this, uh, this area of the system. So in the high pressure system, we've now got a liquid. And it's taken a lot of energy to change it from a gas to a liquid. And that energy has come from the car to drive the compressor and also the condenser, which I'll put in in a second. OK, so liquid atomizes, doesn't actually change to a gas at this point, atomizes it and pushes it into the evaporator, which is inside. This is the firewall of the car. Here's the evaporator in the car, atomizes it. And what it needs now is energy to change it from a, a liquid to a gas. And it takes that energy from the incoming air. So we've got our blower motor here. I'll put a little fan in. So there's our fan and we're blowing air through from the outside world, goes through the evaporator and it's taking energy from the incoming air, it's taking heat energy for the incoming air to convert it to a gas again. And that phase change takes a lot of energy and the heat energy is removed from the incoming air and so you get very cold air. So that's why we use special gases because they change from gases to liquids at pressures and temperatures which work in air, condition, in air conditioning systems. Okie doke, pressure, liquid, atomize, back to a gas, takes heat from the air, makes your feet cold. And at this point we've got a true gas again and then we put it through the condenser. And to condense the uh, gas back to an atomized liquid form, we take energy from the incoming air. We've got the auxiliary fan here, draw in the auxiliary fan. That whizzes around, takes air from the front of the car, and that energy is uh, taken from the gas and converts it to atomized liquids again, which are then compressed. Okay, so 
that's how a very basic air conditioning system works. We've got the dryer as well. I can't remember if it's there or there. And we've got pressure sensors as well. And on the E31, you've got a double pressure switch. It notices if the pressure's too low in the whole system and it won't turn the compressor on. And then it notices if the pressure's just right and the compressor runs. And if it's too high, then it runs the uh, fan absolutely flat out uh, to try and reduce the pressure within the system. So obviously the, the hotter the whole system gets, the higher the pressure gets. And uh, so that's why I have switches. Radio, getting off the point again, I'm afraid. Right, so that's, uh, if the system isn't running, the compressor's off, then we've got a basic pressure within the system, which is around about 50, 60 PSI, when nothing's moving at all. Uh, as soon as the compressor runs, what it'll do is the high pressure side will start to increase quite rapidly as we start forming a liquid around on the pr high pressure side and the low pressure will just drop to nothing until we start the system working where we start taking uh, energy from the air and then condensing it back again and then the low pressure will start to rise back up again and in a working system what we're expecting to see is somewhere around about 35 to uh, 240 psi of the low pressure side at an ambient temperature of uh, 20 degrees C. Obviously the hotter the ambient air is the higher the pressure is in the whole system and we add a, a gas to give us a reading which is also relevant to the air temperature. And I'll put up a, a quick chart of what the pressure should be and also gives you the high pressure. Now this is why, why air conditioning engineers say you can't just measure the low pressure and add gas. Because for instance, if we had a blockage in the expansion valve, then this side would become very high pressure and this side would be very low pressure. And of course we keep on adding gas until we got up to our 35 to 40, by which time we're trying to compress a liquid and then things go horribly wrong. Your fan belt starts smoking, makes horrible noises not good. I've done that. I did that on one of my E38s. I thought, ah, a bit of more gas wouldn't help. No, and then the compressor starts really thumping. And uh, yeah, lots of smoke. So don't do that. So we have a chart and we've got 35 to 40 at 20 C. And that's our aim for today. OK, so that's why you measure pressures in the system. And that's quickly how and um, ignoring things like the dryer and the pressure switches and so on. That's how a refrigeration system works. It's a phase change. It's a phase change from a liquid to a gas and from a gas back to a liquid again, which takes lots of energy, which we take from the air with the condenser and the evaporator. So you've got two phase changes, liquid to a gas, gas to a liquid, both take lots of energy. This takes energy from the incoming air, makes your feet cold. This takes energy from the uh, removes energy from the system by making the air that goes through the condenser hot. So two phase changes and that's how refrigeration systems work. Right, well, here we go then. Got the bonnet up on the E31. And the first question is, how do you tell the difference between the low pressure side and the high pressure side? Well, the low pressure side has bigger piping than the high pressure side. And not only that, the fittings are different as well. This fitting on the high pressure side is much larger than the one on the low pressure side. And that also means that the adapter we've got in the kit isn't gonna fit on the high pressure side. We don't wanna plug it into that. Lots of pressure in there. So there we go, that's the first question answered. Low pressure side has got a smaller connector and we just whip off the top. Put the doofer in your pocket so you don't lose it. And there you go, there's the low pressure side. Right, the next thing we do is we'll get our um, little kit all ready to go and then we need to start the car. Now, if you've got a situation where the compressor doesn't run and uh, the auxiliary fan doesn't run, then it's quite likely you've just got very little gas altogether. 
and a single feeble little can is going to make no difference at all but on my car the air conditioning is working but it's a bit feeble and that can be a lot of things but at least we can check the pressure on the low pressure side and if it's a bit lower than it should be then we can puff some gas into it and of course it goes in as a liquid to start with and that means you have to have the bottle facing downwards towards the valve 134A used to do the other way up and also you need to agitate the can as well and that keeps the uh, stuff coming out the more you agitate it the more pressure you get behind it and also your hand warms up the tin and you notice that the tin gets cold as it goes in righty ho so we've got our gauge and we've got the stuff as I say it has to go that way up with this stuff not quite sure why and we've got to pop a hole in it with this tap so this has got a sharp point at the end of it that pops a hole in the top of the tin so what we do is we just turn it back far enough so it doesn't pop a hole in it straight away there we go and then put screw the tin on reasonably tight and that's got a seal there seals it to that now we need to connect the connector to the low pressure side and also you need to put it in a position where you can actually see the gauge okay so with this what you do is you just push it on there we go a bit more effort than normal so yeah push it on and it's not going to come out until you lift the collar up and my system is actually saying let's get the other camera in That's showing 50 psi already, which means it's obviously got gas in, and that's its sort of settled pressure throughout the whole system. Now, of course, as soon as we start the car, what should happen is the low pressure size should drop as it pushes um, the compressed gas, well, in turn to a liquid, around the system. And so the high pressure side will increase and the low pressure side will decrease. Anyway, you see what I mean when we get going? Start the car, make sure the air conditioning's on. Right, so we can pop a hole in the can. That's the hole in the can. Then watch the pressure gauge. If it starts going too high, reduce it again. And you can see it pumping around the system. So open the can, bottom up, shake it a bit. I can feel it coming out of the can. Can's getting colder never get out of the blue there we go that was the air conditioning off back on again pressure's getting a bit high there we go So we could do with another tin of this stuff, really. Let's open the can again. And close the can up. Right, well I put the air conditioning fan on full. It's cold in the cabin, so that's a good start, but we're a bit low on gas, because we're still at 30 we should be between 35 and 40 um, which is just a bit too low so the air conditioning's working okay but our pressure's a bit low now 30 degree the uh, 30 psi um, is fine as long as the ambient temperature is a lot lower but at um, 20 degrees ambient temperature we should be between 35 and 40 psi so we're a little bit short of gas, but at 30 psi, the air conditioning's working fine. So our bottle's empty. Um, what I could do is order some more of this top-up stuff and get the pressure up to 35 or 40, but we're not doing too bad at all. 35, um, 32, 33, 45, yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, so that air conditioning system's working. 
and it's working fine. It's uh, doing exactly what it should do. We've now got a steady pressure, 30 psi or so. I'll show that to that camera. I will warn you though that uh, some of these gauges are wildly inaccurate. I had, when I did this a while ago, I used an old uh, gauge that I've had knocking around since the AE32 days and that was miles out. It was coming, <laughs> whipping off the end of the scale and that usually means that the compressors had it and the system pressure is just high all round it. Because as you saw, when we started the engine and the compressor started moving, the pressure drops quite significantly. So colour up and off it quickly. There we go. He's off. What we do for back on? Well, there we go. Back in the car again. And uh, was it on full? Yeah, that is that's pretty damn good. I mean, the E31 air conditioning is absolutely fantastic. Trucks out such a lot of air. Right, there we go, job all done, and yeah, the E31's air conditioning is nice and cold again, just like it should be. And in fact, the E31's air conditioning is the best in any car I've ever owned, and that's hardly surprising when you've got 1.6 kilograms of refrigerant in an air conditioning system. It's twice as much as was in the, well, as is in the E64, and about four times as much as in the Mini. So it was really the pinnacle of air conditioning systems in the E31. Quite why they needed such a powerful air conditioning system, I've no idea. But there you go, 1.6 kilograms of refrigerant makes you very cold when it's working. Okay, I thought what I'd do is quickly go through the process again and explain what the meter readings were. And it did confuse me at one point, to be honest. So we loosen the screw so that the pin wasn't sticking out. We put the bottle of stuff on, didn't start the car. We connected this to the low side. It won't fit the high side, the connector's bigger, so it won't go on. Fitted this on and immediately the pressure went up to about 50 PSI. That's the sort of ambient pressure of the air conditioning system when it's not running. So the high pressure and the low pressure side would have all been at 50 PSI and the rest of the system was as well. Okay, so the next thing we did was we switched on the air conditioning, start, well, started the car, put the air conditioning on, and immediately the pressure dropped very low. And the reason it does that is because it now takes the refrigerant and starts to compress it into a liquid in front of the expansion valve. And that, of course, robs the low pressure side of any pressure. So we expect it to go quite low, and then we'd expect it to start rising again as the pressure starts returning through the system. But there's a, a, a short period where the pressure does drop quite low. Unfortunately, I forgot to put the fan on in the E31 on the air conditioning system. And of course, as soon as we started uh, compressing the gas to a, a liquid and then back to a gas into the evaporator, the evaporator cooled down very quickly to a point where it switched off the compressor. So I was looking at the gauge and wondering what was going on. Uh, because the gauge rose back up over 50 psi and at one point I thought, I've got, I've got too much gas in it, something's going wrong. But what had happened is the compressor had stopped and that was the ambient pressure in the system. So we had something over 50 psi throughout the whole air conditioning system again because the compressor had stopped. Okay, so I fanned it about for a while until I worked out that I should have had the fan on. Put the fan on full and of course that heated up the evaporator again and the compressor started running. And then at least we got into a steady state where the low pressure start side started increasing again, where it dropped immediately as soon as the compressor started, then started increasing again to about 25 PSI, at which point I emptied the whole of the can into the system and we got up to about 32 PSI on the low side, and at which point the air conditioning system was working very well. Now the low pressure pressure is dependent on the ambient temperature. So today in England was about 20 degrees, a lovely hot day. And at 20 degrees, you expect between 35 and 40 PSI at the low side. And uh, so I was a bit short of gas, but that's fine. We're working again and I can al always order some more. And of course, the colder temperatures, you expect a lower pressure because of course the, the, the ambient temperature uh, expands the gas in the system and increases the pressure. So at higher temperatures, we expect to find higher pressures. 
Okay, so there we go, the whole system's working, lovely. But I will say that this whole plan is very contentious. And the reason it's contentious is because we're only measuring the low pressure side. Now it could be, for instance, that the expansion valve has, uh, is partially blocked, and in which case the high pressure side will get very high and the low pressure side would get very low. And we'd be trying to add gas to a system which was faulty rather than trying to uh, sort out a lack of gas. Now, in my case with the Mini and the E31, there wasn't any great uh, loss of gas all of a sudden. It just slowly got slightly warmer and warmer until you got to the point where you think, well, it's not working properly. You can hear the compressor running, but it's not really doing a great job. In which case, then it's reasonably safe to fill it back up with one of the DIY kits. And that's what I've done uh, for quite a few years until the condenser failed, in which case I needed to refill the whole system. And a couple of little tins aren't gonna do anything for 1.6 kilograms of refrigerant. In which case then you go and see the man at the garage who uses the machine to evacuate the system uh, of oil and refrigerant, checks it for a it'll hold a vacuum, and if it holds the vacuum then it will refill the pack oil and refrigerant to the correct level. It will also tell you how much refrigerant it took out, which gives you a good indication of if you've got a big leak. Normally when they do that they'll put a die in there as well, so if you've got a slow leak you can find it. Well. Ugh. As long as you've got a UV torch, so if you have a dye in the refrigerant, then this UV torch is very handy for finding it. Go out there in the dark and uh, have a look around the condenser, around the piping and so on. You can generally find the leak, well, unless it's in the, uh, in the evaporator, actually inside the cabin, so, and you never find that. So at least you've got some idea, and that's how I found the, the leak in the condenser. Okay, so... Yeah, the point I'm trying to make is that this is not a bodge, but it isn't something that the AC people would recommend. And they'll always say, never do it like this, because you don't know what's going on with the system. For instance, as I say, if the expansion uh, valve was blocked, then we get very high pressure on the high pressure side, very low pressure on the low pressure side. And looking at the two, gauge, uh, two gauges, then the AC bloke can say, well, look, mate, you know, the expansion valve's blocked up or something like that. And which is why they really go against you using these little kits. But I found these little kits very useful over the years and have saved me a lot of time and trouble. And especially with as we are now with the virus, we can't just pop out and have our air conditioning system regas. So maybe giving this a go is the way to go forward. And it really has made a difference to both the cars. I mean, the, the Mini was on its sort of last legs. It was getting quite warm in there, and now it's fine again. And the E31 was getting to the point where I was worrying that the air conditioning was losing its gas, and that's fine again. And of course, I'll update you as well if we have any problems in the future. But I've done this before, and uh, it seems to me like that's going to hold its pressure. I mean, it was still working, the compressor was still running, that's the first thing to mention, that if the compressor runs, then you've still got some gas pressure in the system. And of course, putting this on told us straight away that we had an ambient pressure of about 50 psi. Righty-ho, that's enough about air conditioning systems. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for commenting. And I always try and answer the comments as soon as I can. See you next time.